It's baby time. Yeah. Baby Ekus begin the friendship process. Wow. It's season pass content. Whatever. The fuck? What does that mean? I don't know. It's a clear. Oh, maybe I'm gonna read Equus this time. Okay, sure. It's a. Cl Do you have a good voice for him? Maybe. All right. It's a clear, cool night. And you're wandering around trying to decide whose hive you should crash at before the sun comes up. It's nice having so many options for places to stay. Like maybe the humans you could also do. You've cultivated a decent community for yourself. And there is an ember of pride in your belly about it. Still, you find yourself feeling a little aimless. The last couple friends you made were pretty intense. That's not necessarily a bad thing. You're vibing at a chiller frequency right now. There's still a while until it gets dangerously light out, so you sort of pop around, seeing what feels right. It's kind of fun to test out the boundaries of your powers you've used it to find friends, but you're really not sure how far it goes. You think tree, and you don't know how your magic brain decided which one to choose, but fuck, it, but fuck if you aren't sitting in an extremely high branch for a second later. You try it again, with whatever concept comes to mind. <laughs> and try it again with whatever concept comes to mind. Garden. You try it again, okay. Garden cave. Mall. And it all works. You don't remember ever having been to any of these specific places, but you feel a strange prickly affinity for them each time your feet touch the ground. Those are all pretty generic locational nouns, though. You wonder if it works for things that are more abstract. Quickly, before you can talk yourself out of the naivety of it, you think home. Uh. It still takes you a minute to open your eyes, even after you feel your guts all back in the right place. Because what if you wake up in a room that feels like yours? Or worse, the infinitely more likely, what if you don't? You breathe in deep and immediately cough wretchedly. Yeah, that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. You open your watery eyes, clinging to the hope that uh, maybe you come from a land of dusty comforts, where you always just breathe in layers of dust, and it's fine. It's not fine. You've landed inside one of the spindliest, most precarious hunks of metal that has ever been bolted into the side of a cliff. It looks like some ancient outpost. Not homey at all. What's worse for wear? Yeah. What's worse than we were last year? I, I, it could be actually, because it, maybe it's in the present day. Of course, that wouldn't work. It was stupid. It was stupid to try. Defeat is bitter in your mouth. There's a twisty part of you that wants to curl up on a particular piece of floor and take a nap. You can't work out how much of that urge is just you wanting to give in. So just in case you don't surrender to it, maybe you'll come back another time and sift through all the shit on the shelves. But for now, you're not sure how structurally sound this thing is, and you can't take any more disappointment. So you try one more time to pop up somewhere. You haven't been before. What was that one guy's name that Gamzee mentioned? Oh yeah, Equius. Maybe he's chill. You think his name and zap away, imagining yourself leaving an edgy, despondent swirl of dust in your wake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he's well drawn. Aw, oh, sweet, it's this song. Ooh, look at them sexy horses in the background. Oh, <laughs> yes. That fucking horse-ass picture right there. Yes, anyway. Where's the penises? I don't <laughs> see any penises. They, they are indeed clothed, I will not deny. Faker. Yeah. Uh, your magical zap calibration maybe isn't as off as you thought. Because you pop in on Equius as close as it is possible to get to the dude without landing directly on top of him. Uh -uh. <laughs> the astonishing unchillness of the situation is imminently apparent. He's mid jump, mid yell, mid sweat, and mid swing of an outlandishly beef ar beefy arm down toward you. You freeze frame like an anime protagonist analyzing their choices mid battle, and you're drawn out split second of an observational window. You realize he's not aiming at you but in the direction of whatever noisy worrying thing you happen to plop down on and down in front of uh fuck <laughs> as soon as he sees you his eyebrows shoot up above his busted ass sunglasses and his yell strangles itself into panic 
His arm shudders as though he's trying and failing to alter its glorious face forward, uh, faceward trajectory. You really do not uh, want to get your face punched off your head, so you scream and zap just outside the high arch door on the far end of the room. <laughs> oh yeah, they got it covered up, but they, but yeah. They, yeah, they, yeah. Oh, this is great. Look at this. So look at this fucking amazing hive. <laughs> yes. Anyway, oh, well, he's got like hoof lamps. Anyway, <laughs> you hear a deep, meaty thunk followed by a groan. And a sharp metallic crunch. The whirring stops. Oh my god, is he dead? Is the other thing dead? Should he go check on him? You skitter away from the door, and then back to it, unsure what to do. Oh boy. Was that? <laughs> Was that? No, it can't have been. Hello. Show yourself this instant. Oh fuck. He does not sound happy. His words are a little garbled, too. Like some teeth just got knocked out by whoever's ass he was just kicking. You weigh your options. <laughs> oh, let's chicken out. You don't know. Equius looked super strong and even more pissed. You really, really do not want to be next in line to get disemboweled. If friendship with this guy is really meant to be, maybe you can reconnect with Gamzee as an Intermediary. That sounds like a normal and cool time. Panic grips you as his heavy footsteps approach the door. Forgetting you have super useful zap powers, uh, specifically for use in time-sensitive panic situations, you turn and run. You glance over your shoulder as you go and collide spectacularly with a brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, what a baby. Looking up from the brightly polished floor where you lay, Inexplicably doused in milk and broken glass, you realize it wasn't a wall you hit. It's a glistening, part pseudo-humanoid, part horse-cow-beast person. Another godforsaken Lussus, maybe? You really aren't sure, but the fact that his top half looks kind of like a more dapper- uh, kind of, wait, looks kind of like a more dapper you, fills you with the most cursed mixture of fear and curiosity you've felt thus far. He doesn't seem bothered by you at all. Only anxiously trying to get only anxiously trying to get by you. Oh boy. He looks great. You try to stand up, but you slip on the milk and eat shit, just as Equius bursts through the door. Oh baby. <laughs> they both tower over you. Uh he's shorter than his lessons on this one. It's weird. <laughs> Unless he's like in the background. Whatever. Um, yeah, they both tower over you, where you lay flopping ineffectively in a burge burgeoning puddle of froth. God, is everyone in this house just made of muscle? You've had enough of this regular strength escape uh, attempt shit. Bruised, humiliated, and covered in dairy, you zap on out of here. Alright. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Here we go again. Okay. Boop. Be brave. Ah, uh, oh no, oh man. You know the Gamzee seal of approval is maybe not the most credible, but this guy might be an okay dude, and it would definitely be your fault if he was hurt in there. You should at least check on him, explain or something. You can zap away if it comes down to it. You do the polite thing this time and knock. He opens the door fast, like he was just on the other side of it. You both jump. He collects himself and glares at you, arms crossed against his heaving chest. Rivulets of blood and sweat run together and pool in the divot below, uh, above his weird alien clavicle. And a low, menacing sound rumbles through him. You can feel it in your teeth. Holy shit, he's terrifying. Okay. Explain yourself immediately. <laughs> <laughs> you think you might shit your pants on the spot, but he gives you a quick up and down, up and down, and rearranges his expression into a sort of forced smile. It doesn't really feel any more welcoming than uh, what with the blood dripping down his chin. 
But the fact that he's trying is maybe a good sign. You hold in your fear shit, just in case. Or perhaps come in and take a seat. He steps aside to beckon you through the door, then sort of freezes. Unless you should be the one instructing me, in which case it would behoove you to make that promptly apparent. <laughs> I cannot work out how exactly to address you when you don't wear a cast symbol and you look like that, which I am either very sorry for or quite cross about, depending on where the truth lies. <laughs> either way, I am beginning to perspire about it. So out with it right now. Man, he's really struggling. The anger you felt radiating off him before is still there. But that doesn't seem to be all of what's driving him. It's like there are two competing forces inside him. One that wants to yell at you, and one that wants to get yelled at by you. You might conceptualize these forces as fierce animals, warring in a glorious and unwavering balance. Forces, perhaps? Anyway, you'll workshop that metaphor later. You tell him... You, uh, you know you look weird, but you promise you're cool. You know a friend of his. At the mention of Gamzee, the corner of his lip curls up into something complicated. So you change course real fast, just in case. And Karkat. Does he know Karkat? What a guy. He eyes you warily, or you think he probably does. With his sudden- with his hidden- with his eyes hidden behind his shades, you can't be sure. But he's being very still. Sweat and blood are still just fucking running down his face, and he's not even acknowledging it. You laugh nervously. You both continue to stand there, <laughs> waiting for the other to make a move. It would be super helpful if someone was assertive around here. <laughs> Luckily, some kind of cow centaur man, his lessus you assume, breaks the awkward doorway stalemate by silently trotting up and handing Equus, Equus a desperately needed towel. He then offers you both some frosty gl frosty glasses of milk. Something deep inside you feels a swell of warm recognition for the ritualistic moment of a friend's parent bringing you snacks. So you down that thick shit in one go. Okay. Blessus' mustache flutters in appreciation, and after a nod between him and Equius, he leaves as quietly as he came. I see you're an aficionado of the sweetest of nectars. This speaks to the likelihood of your nobility, which is reassuring. <laughs> I may be able to overlook the circumstances of our meeting then. <laughs> if you can provide strong evidence, of course. Tell me, are you also a hoofbeast art enthusiast? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> We're just gonna, like, explain our interest, and he's like, ah, oh, yes, okay, so you are high blood then. <laughs> he beckons you inside the room. And as you follow, you tell him you're not really sure what that means, but probably you're a fan of a lot of- Oh. Haha, uh -huh, wow, okay. So that's what he means. Cool, yeah. You know what? You know, whatever. You feel like you learned once that anything can be art if it feels right. So art can definitely be the, uh, well-muscled horsemen on the walls of this here living space. Equius rumbles in agreement and gestures toward the chair. Uh, it's one of those cool red and black gamer themed chairs <laughs> with embedded speakers. There's a lot of uh, that kind of decorated decorating motif in here, which is a little at odds with the high ceilings and engraved doorways and general blue blood old money architecture. Equius is a mouth breather. Honestly. <laughs> oh, yeah, haha. <laughs> And there are broken bows and robot parts all over the goddamn fucking place. Not in neat little stacks or connected to other robot parts to create whole robots. Just an absurd wasteland of obliterated robo corpses. Like they all were torn limb from limb and then just scooted off towards the, toward the wall. A fair few of them are spattered in blood too. <coughs> Dried. It looks almost black, but the fresh stuff on the fists of one of the pieces at your feet is bright indigo. On the one hand, it is absolutely a relief to see that it's all metal and not flesh body parts scattered, scattering the floor, but also it's still, you know, not not fucked up looking. 
Your, sp your smile probably has too many teeth in it. Just seem normal. The Equius returns it in, uh, returns it in kind and leans, what he probably thinks is casually, against the edge of his desk. It creaks under his weight. Jesus, he could just end you in half a second, couldn't he? You claim we have mutual acquaintances. Since when have you ever made fucking hoofbeast jokes? <sighs> I don't even remember that. So demonstrate it. He nods towards. He nods toward the screen of his desktop, where he has Trollian open. Oh fuck. Okay, you guess you can just click on someone and ask them to prove it? He seems to know both Cargat and Gamzee, and between the two, you know who's most likely to be online and ready to pester and be pestered at all times. So you click the screen name and start typing, Cargat. <laughs> <laughs> hey Cargat, I hope you're having a good day. I just had a quick favor to ask you. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, also, I miss you. What the fuck? What happened to you? Where's your horrifying quirk? How am I supposed to saddle up for some truly nauseating conversation if I don't have a not-veiled-at-all-bulge reference greeting me at the beginning of every one of your excruciating messages? Are you sick? Like, in a new way? They really do manually type their quirks. Yep. Crazy-ass bastard. Yep. Oh, right, Jesus. You're logged in as Equius. Your fool ass just started typing like you had your own account for some reason. You blame it on the nerves and get you clarifying. Oh, haha, sorry. This is your new friend. After I dropped you off yesterday, I wandered around for a while, and now I'm hanging out with Equius. I'm using his computer. Oh. My pusher almost fucking gave up on the spot. I don't think he trusts me. Can you vouch for me? Hold on. Let me just bask in the concept of the two of you hanging out. This is a mental masterpiece. A, tab a tableau of awkward fucking splendor. I legitimately do not ha even know what sort of short-circuiting must be happening in his brain to try and make sense of you. Please don't tell me a single fucking thing about it later. Okay, woo. I'm done now. Is he watching? I could slam over your shoulder and tucks his hair behind his ear so it doesn't get in the way of his typing. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's you. a bow and arrow. Any resemblance otherwise is only a pleasant coincidence. And yes, I am watching. Okay, whatever. Listen up, you milk-logged chum squelter. This little guy right there. The one you're probably dripping sweat all over. That's one of the realest friends you will ever hope to make. Sure, they'll send your life careening horrendously off course, but it will absolutely be worth it for the level of dedication they bring to the table. Don't even bother with the blood color horse shit with this one, since they're the only one of their species. Just roll with it for once, in your wretched life. Don't fuck this one up, Zahak. They're an abomination, and they wouldn't know what a boundary was if it took up the residence in their grease shoot. But you two have those things in common, so in this case, that's a good thing. Equius inhales sharply. You wonder what Karkat meant by that. About Equius, you mean. Sure, you're an inexplicable being, neither Earthling nor Alternian, but with weird, itchy memories about having lived on both planets. But he doesn't seem out of the normal range of fucked up considering troll standards. In fact, how about this? That is sufficient. Goodbye. <laughs> he minimizes the window and steps back, somehow sweatier than he was before. He taps the towel gingerly to his forehead. So, now we have been properly introduced. We have not been, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay then. You definitely thought he was going to be more thorough than that. He does seem a little shaken up, so maybe you should just be thankful the conversation got cut short before he could really dig too deep into your lore and get judgmental about it. I... I do not know the standard method of communication with your species. You will take the lead here, and it will surely become clear how I should proceed. <laughs> yes, that sounds extremely feasible. You will now begin the friendship process. <laughs> I command it. Oh, sure, you got this. Uh, how exactly do you got this? Cool options. Oh, man, you pick this one. <laughs> Let's show off. Okay. Great, you can do that. 
making friendship happen is like the one the one skill you actually have. From what you recall, you have a 100% success rate at it, too. So this building report is safe in your hands. Excellent. We like we like fucking teleport, like clip through a wall. <laughs> and just die. We suffocate. Stupid. Suffocate into the ground. Alright. Ooh, you really weren't sure he'd be down for this. It really seemed like he might be coming to kill you. Uh when you heard him stomping toward the door earlier. Kill you? I would never. He cuts himself off as though he didn't intend to admit he didn't have it in him to murder you. He clears his throat. At first I thought you might be Arthour, my lessus. It's ridiculous looking back, though you do share a sort of globular pated resemblance. How did you come to entangle yourself in my brawl only to immediately escape? Are you abnormally fast? <laughs> I admit that particular method of being strong had not occurred to me, but I am intrigued. I, too, like to test the limits of my physical capability. Oh no, you can just zap places. It's a kind of strength, maybe, if you want to define a superpower that way. You show off a bit. Since you know Equius likes demonstrations, you tell him about how all you have to do is think of the place or person you want to visit, and pop. Oh. You bop to the top of the pile of robot parts, then back in front of him, on the floor. It's like that. Except anywhere. I see. That is exceptional. <laughs> he sort of just starts quaking gently where he stands. He rubs his neck with his towel, but he's not really... Uh, he's not really even sweating any more than he had been already. It's as though in his excitement he forgot to sweat. And just dabbed by force of habit? Is that a thing? Why are you even noticing this shit? Is it possible to bring along a pillion rider? <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Look at this little baby. I'm gonna read your newt, dummy. What, like zap a buddy with you? In answer, you extend an elbow for him to grab. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna break our arm. <laughs> his whole body is vibrating by this point. He reaches his hand out, but stops just before he touches you. Like, you might shock him. It's okay, it won't hurt, you say. But he'll hurt us. Mm -hmm. His fingers twitch just above your elbow, and his mouth purses in distrust. You're not sure exactly what he's worried about, since you're extremely undangerous, but you let him have a moment to work through whatever he's, he's nervous about. He takes a steadying breath and shatters arm. It's a little unsettling to see his face relax, even briefly, into soft, calm lines. Flipped palm up, his hand slowly cradles your forearm from below. He nods a sharp, determined movement and starts telling you what to do again. You will take me with you. Her name is Nepeta. Uh -huh. Do you require any other information, or will that be sufficient? That ought to do it. You haven't heard of her. <laughs> you don't think, but you feel an immediate surge of excitement about this little jaunt. It's probably mostly just the friendship thirst talking, but you can't help but feel like this is a connection that is supposed to be made. Like it's something that matters. You zap away. A pleasant little cosmic slip and slide feeling when you zap around is jolted. Like you got yanked off the ride with a fish hook to your guts. You land back exactly where you started. That did not work. Did you mislead me? No, this should work. You're not even high this time. As impressive as the strength of your power is, perhaps you need to apply more attention to the more intricate details involved. She is an olive blood, very short, and shamefully unkempt. This information will help. You hope so. He uh, is starting to look pretty tense, even with the fawn lilt in his voice as he talks about his messy friend. Very short. You give it another whirl, and then you feel it. That same weighty glare on the back of your neck telling you you don't belong. What? Oh, and keep posing. <laughs> Fuck, you got zap blocked again. You will try again. Each word is ground out, one at a time between his clenched teeth. Blood trickles through the cracks in his bite and out of the corner of his lips. <laughs> you really don't it's like the keep posing parts. <laughs> it's, it's jerk. <laughs> 
don't think it is going to work. The Equius looks like he's a second away from losing his shit, so reluctantly you comply. <laughs> I'm fucking trying to skip ahead. It's not going to work. Who's that, John? <laughs> As you hurtle through space time toward Equius's floor, you start to wonder if this is just going to be what happens now when you try to m and make friends. You accept this truth into your heart as your face attempts to accept accepts the impending wood planks. I wonder if he saw that or not. I don't think he did. <laughs> Equis lands on his feet a little ways away from you. Uh, a little ways away from you. His hands balled into fists, bellowing with impotent rage. He's not even saying words, just unleashing an agonizing guttural wail. Oh. <laughs> He punches an already dead robot torso, leaning against a bookshelf. In punctuation, he kicks its decapitated head, which explodes into a shower of bolts and sparks. As the dust clears, you see him dutifully wiping himself down with a towel, breathing hard. He seems to have worked his anger out, because he walks with purposeful grace, as though he learned it in co co cotillion. cotillion and sits next to you, where you're still sort of laying on the floor. You are both silent for a beat. Equius tugs at a lock of his hair, anxiously wrapping it around his finger. His hands fall to his lap. I apologize for that display. The disappointment emotion is not my favorite. I feel better now, however. My Moirail lives very far away, so our paths have never been able to cross. Whatever force is blocking us seems to wield significant narrative power, so I will respect its whims as above mine in status. For now. <laughs> huh. You know, it happens. You're no stranger to the ups and downs of friendship. The trick is to know when to keep trying and when to fall back, no matter how futile it feels or how alone you are. Your morale is impressive, considering your circumstances. That's probably mostly a compliment. You're not really sure. Your circumstances definitely feel like they could be worse. You are very sure of yourself. How do you manage this when you are the only one of your kind? Without a society to tell you how to act or feel, how do you know if you are living in the correct way? How do you know where you belong? Or if you belong? Fucking ouch. The desire to belong is a yawning wound in your guts, one that never seems to heal. You try not to let this rip too many stitches out of it. You never feel totally secure, you say. There's always fear, always doubt, always pain. But you find people in unlikely places, make community one where you can. Shit. You have belongings at, what, like eight people's houses now? It's not the same as having your own spot, but it's definitely something. You started off on the defensive, but you realize it's true. So really, you figure, you're still defending yourself by your relationships to other people. But that can come from a good place, and not just a twisted and forced one. You get wanting to, you get wanting to know you're doing something right, unlocking your own mentally devised set of achievements for that sweet dopamine rush. But leaning on a fucked up social system for direction and validation doesn't really help him. And it definitely isn't helping many others. You don't need that to figure yourself out. His brow furrows, and you can almost hear a couple of 4,672 4, rigid barriers in his brain creaking open. It's not just other people, you think. You find strength- oh, sorry, STRENGTH! Is that right? In your own self, too. You've met a lot of people and learned a lot of ways to be but you're still working on what that means for you. No, it is not right, but I appreciate the, the attempt. This type of understanding does not come easy to me, but I believe I am following. In my case, I have striven to locate and retool the edge of my own ability. Physical prowess is a relatively typical indigo trait, but I am abnormally strong. <laughs> I have worked to hone it in an attempt to make sense of myself and why I am like this. Re reigning in in aberrant trait and defining myself by it. He gestures to the god-awful robot mess then flexes his hand. The blood has coagulated since you two started talking. He stares at it. This way of thinking may not always be a good thing, 
However, certain habits are difficult to break. Though there are loopholes in every rule, I often lose track of which regulations I actually enjoy following, and which I just do not know how to disregard. At least with this hobby, all the stakes are under my control, with no chance of others getting hurt. Unless they haphazardly zap in between your fight, looking for friendship, that is. His smile is as broken and rigid as it was the first time, but it feels different, backed by the rough warmth of his laugh. Ha ha. <laughs> yes, do not do that again. Next time, you will zap to the front door and Arthour will let you in. Next time, you think, and you smile back. Wow. Yay. Excellent victory. Royale. Yay. With cheese. Yay. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the losing room. All right. So we're both freaks, huh? <laughs> oh. We decided to just go for it. Sometimes leaping into what could potentially be a super sensitive topic for someone ends up being the key ingredient in a friendship pie. You can see it now, Equius crying, thankful you are here to talk about whatever this unspeakable commonality you share is, you wiping his tears with his already pretty soaked towel. You shake yourself out of, the da out of your daydream and drop this sweet loaded question right in his lap. Holy shit, you can't wait till this works. Excuse you. Speak for yourself. My standing is unblemished. Karkat is only comparing us in that way to further the rears that he is removed from that particular category. It is a delicate social dance. <laughs> oh, okay. You're not really sure Karkat sees it that way. But hey, whatever works for them. Anyway, you know, he was just yelling a lot about something that's not a big deal, as is his manner of showing affection, but you just thought he meant, like, the horn thing. The horn thing? Oh shit, you're sorry. You don't know what things are that aren't cullable around here, you know? It's almost like it's all entirely arbitrary and at the whims of whoever's in charge or something. You like the look, personally, but you haven't made friends with someone with a broken one before, so... You're not sure how common it is. It is relatively uncommon. There are exceptionally sturdy. Sorry, they are exceptionally sturdy. So it takes something very strong to break them. <laughs> he looks like he might be about to tell you the story, but somehow you keep not learning the lesson where you should just chill and experience something instead of leap to try to figure it out before it happens. So fueled by enthusiasm for your newest spur of the moment decision, you stop listening to his lecture on troll biology and focus instead on zapping to the moment his horn broke. God damn it. Troll biology is probably super uninteresting anyway. <sighs> and you'll come right back here after and be able to contribute more to the conversation. Oh boy. Uh, you pop into familiar nothingness, but instead of appearing at a point in Equius' past, you feel yourself split. It's like looking at a magic eye puzzle. But with your whole body, you try to concentrate to align the segments into a whole, but it's too late. You think for a second it might be a cool new power, but it doesn't feel that different than before. Only just triple. It's like there's other three things here. Well, I see two. What's the third thing? Is that a cave? It looks like the cave. Oh, you're right. There's a cave. It's like there's narrative precedent for this moment existing in more than one plane of truth. Oh boy. Unable to do anything else, you sit there in space, contemplating this paradox. You watch. I imagine it's like three to- oh look, you've got a sign. I imagine it's like a slow break over time. Like it cracked and then maybe it like eventually hooved off. You better read the newt dummy. He looks a little younger, but not much. He's beating the shadow robot, but it's not the same as it was when you saw it before. However briefly, then his movements had been smooth, even in their rage, like he wasn't afraid until you showed up. Here, in this weird half-present space, his movements are erratic. He swings wildly, unthinkingly, like there is nothing left inside him but one last flicker of fury. His oh, he's still got his teeth. 
His teeth are gritted against tears, and he just looks so tired. You want to pull him back to make him rest. You see him reach the same conclusion, but not at all how you meant it. He just stops. The robot does not. You feel him close his eyes. <laughs> oh, there he is! A little buff wiggler! Oh, gross. At <laughs> the same moment, you see another snapshot of time. Much further back, this must be the cavern. There's a little grub, wobbling its way up a stalagmite in a cave. It's definitely a precarious place, but it still somehow feels safe to you for some reason. Safe, but also, like, super violent. Who knows? There's a lot going on right now. He crawls up to the top and roars a baby clicking roar, eyeing a taller cave precipice. You see his little behind wiggler- wiggle- You see his little behind wiggle as he moves to jump. Okay. So all of these are reasons, yeah. Over top that, there is another Equius, looking about the same as he does now. Just plus one horn, out for a stroll in the moonlight. His, his, uh, his glasses are less cracked, too. This one is about to cross the street, when a majestic herd of hoof beasts <laughs> crests a faraway hill. He stops transfixed as the animals gallop across the plain. He does not hear the approaching scuttle buggy. You watch all of this from your floating void standpoint, unable to stop it. The arcs of their falls align in cosmic synchrony, hair fanned out like a banner of defeat. The echo of the crack the horn makes as they shatter reverberates in your teeth. You yell as all three equiuses hit their respective grounds. You can't help it. You've started to care about this guy a little bit. As the sound leaves you, all three of them turn their injured heads to look at you in unison and you freeze. Shit. That's probably not supposed to happen, right? You were just watching, not changing anything. No, you're still there. You barely know what you're doing, though, so you can never be sure. You zap immediately back to the present, winded and dizzy. You feel deeply, suddenly co corporeal, like you do when you step off a boat onto the shore, but with each atom of your body separately and all at once. He remembers that we're the reason that he we, he remembers that we were there every time, because <laughs> we were there abruptly. Equius is standing exactly where he was when he when you left, him, totally unchanged, still yammering about anatomy. Whoa, good to know nothing got fucked up in the future after you. Wait, you were there. Yeah. <laughs> he pauses, shaking his head to clear it as his memories realign. I don't know how I didn't remember. I accepted your offer of friendship, and you repay me with this tomfoolery. You knew how it happened all this time, and yet you played ignorant, jockeying for position as someone in my trust, only to play me for a fool. No, see, you didn't before. It wasn't until after you went back that this became the way things went, see? The way time travel works is... Do not explain time travel to me. What do you take me for? You're still reeling a bit from seeing him so vulnerable. By varying definitions of vulnerable, you guess, but still. You know, you got this information from an unfair source, but now you have it. You don't feel right just leaving. There's more to Equius than you'd originally thought, and you can feel the chance to learn more about him slipping away. I don't know what it is you want from me, but you will not receive it. Whatever connection you feel to him in this moment, he clearly does not return it. And, ah, shit. He's starting to get pissed. So it begins to bead at his temples. At his temple. Your brain's scrambling to grasp a hold of any thought on the realization that sweat and all his hair. He's stupid. Did I skip a line? Yes. Okay. Your brain's scrambling to grasp a hold of any thought that isn't your object friendship failure latches on to the realization that sweat and all his hair somehow still looks really good. Uh, would now be a good time to ask him about what products he. <laughs> I don't think this alliance is going to work out. You will leave. I must get back to my business. Your heart sinks as he turns his back to you, presses a button on the back of the robot's neck, and rolls his shoulders. Goodbye. <laughs> well, we got nuded. I <laughs> Leave him alone, he's just looking over there. <laughs> Okay. <sighs> 
Equius, yay! Oh, the dongs was up with that. What do you flashback. mean? Flashback. Yeah, we were in all three places at once. Yeah, but fucking, why did his horn break three times? I don't think it broke three times. I think each one provided an impact that made it break in the end. But we heard all the horns snap. Huh. I think it was just a crack each time, maybe? I don't know. This is dumb. <sighs> anyway. Baby. Uh, that's Equius. Yeah. So. I thought the, I, I really like Equius. I think he's good. What did you think? Yeah. I like the art for him a lot, too. That was really nice. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice art. I give it an applaud. Baby. <laughs> Self-harm I guess. I guess. Anyway. It's enough of that. Go to bed. Goodbye. Stupid. Love you guys. Bye.